All right, so let's take a look at the Rook real quick. And again, I'm recording this. I'm going to pop it up on YouTube, so if you want to go back through it. I'm not going to take over your computers. I'm just going to do it up on the big screen because um, I don't know that there's anything too dissimilar from the pawn that's really going to throw you off. There's just a couple little key points that you have to uh, kind of be aware of. So I'll point that out when we get to it. So real quick, just to get going, um, I'm going to model the Rook the same exact way that we did the pawn. All right. One of the things I did notice as I was walking around with people and like trying to help, and uh, Mr. Egan saw a little bit too when he was working with you, saw a lot of people still trying to model in perspective view. All right. You really should try to avoid modeling something in perspective view. Perspective view is going to give you that um, view similar to like a camera. All right. If you ever tried to make a game in Roblox, Roblox Studio. There's no orthographic view. It's really tough to move objects and find out like where things are located to each other in perspective. It's difficult. In orthographic, it's really easy. All right, so try to stay in an orthographic view. The way to separate that or to distinguish the two, just go up to your um, little view section there within uh, the end brackets, switch over from perspective to orthographic. All right, it's really that simple. Okay, now if you click on the top view, you look straight down, you're going to be in orthographic view and it's really, really easy to model. All right, if I click on my create tab at that point, I'm going to go over to my spline modeling tools. This is similar to the same exact thing you did with the pawn. I'm going to start drawing with just lines. Talked a little bit about how you could add curves to this. That's up to you. It's, it's like whether you choose to do that or not. Uh, it doesn't really, you know, I have, I have no personal uh, input on that. All right, I think it comes out good either way. I just think drawing straight lines is a little bit better, keeps our polygon count a little bit lower, and you're not going to really see the difference in quality. All right, first thing I want to do, I like to find that center of the lathe. All right, so the first line I draw is going to be a completely straight line that goes right down through the middle of the chest piece. I can lock or snap my line by holding down the shift key. All right, and the computer is going to find. Uh, a line that's going to be exactly vertical or horizontal, all right? So you can hold down shift and you can snap those in place. That really helps kind of position that center line exactly to where the center of the object is going to be and the base of the object exactly so that it fits on the board, all right, like perfectly there. And then we're just going to kind of like roughly trace around the outside of the form. It does not have to be perfect, all right? By the time you... Um, use the lathe function all right it ends up coming coming along like with a pretty decent quality level all right so I'm gonna find the profile for the rook at that point one thing up here and this is where you have some uh, places you have to kind of pay attention okay what I want to do up top I want to think about or try to conceive uh, some turret pieces that are coming out of the top. All right, so if you look at where we're at right here, okay, I can almost see on the image or on the artwork where the bottom of that turret is going to be located and then where the top of it is. All right, what I'm going to do this, this model is I'm not going to go all the way to the very, very top. Okay, so I'm only going to go to kind of like the bottom of the turret. And we're going to make the turret piece after the fact, after it's laid. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm only going to go to like halfway through. So I'm just going to go to the bottom of that, and then I'm going to cut this off. All right, now it looks like I have to come back and I have to modify my line just a little bit. So I'm going to actually take uh, that top line that I drew. I'm going to bring this back down here, and we're going to close the spline up. All right, so basically what I did was I just made my profile shape a little bit smaller or a little bit shorter than the top of the piece. Okay, and what I'm going to do is... I'm going to add one extra point right in here across this top segment, all right, so that like when I spin it, I have an extra set of polygons on the inside of it, and I have something to uh, extrude or pull like that top piece from. So you're going to have to just trust me on this one for a second. So if I take a look at that spline tool or that spline profile, and we look at some of the options for just vertices or points, what I want to do is I want to add one extra I want to add one extra point right in here um, on the inside of my on the inside of my uh, line. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through my vertices tools, 
I'm going to find the option here that says insert. So what insert lets me do is it adds extra points to a line segment. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add one extra line segment. I'm going to hold down shift to keep it in a straight line, but I'm going to add one extra line segment right in here in the inside. All right, so if you notice what was one uh, single segment line has now been broken up and we have a single segment line, but there's another point, another single segment line. So it's really a two segment line. All right, now if we go back up and use our modified tools, drop down from the modify list, we'll go to the lathe modifier. All right, we'll go back and we'll do the same exact thing that we did for the pawn. I'm just going to move that lathe axis over a little bit. All right, kind of take a look at things. You guys see where this has now been broken up, all right? And you have uh, a point on the outside, you got a point on the inside, and then a point on the inside of that, all right? That's kind of what we're looking for, all right? I actually, I'm actually going to delete the lathe tool one time. Let me get rid of this interior line segment. I'm just going to delete that one. There we go. Now we'll go back and we'll lathe it, all right? I just want to make sure I'm consistent as to what instruction I'm giving you on uh, spinning that around. Okay, So one of the things before that segment was gone, and we'll just flip this back real quick, uh, I had some surfaces on the inside of that that I would have to go back and delete it. All right, as of right now, they're not there. Okay, So by deleting that interior line segment, what we did was we kind of set things up so that we could close this up the same way that we did with the pawn piece. All right, same thing on the bottom. Now there's just kind of like a little opening. What we're going to do is we're going to convert it over to an editable poly. I'm going to select just those points on the inside. Always turn on that back facing when you're selecting points on the outside of a, a polygonal solid. All right, we can use the scale tool just to kind of scale them a little bit closer. You can use the weld tool to weld them up. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, we got to close up those little holes. So that's one disadvantage to the lathe tools. It leaves you with some ge geometry that has to get cleaned up. All right, let's just make sure we use that correctly. Hold on, something's, something's not acting right. So we'll pick just those points. Try welding them. There we go, that welded up. All right, perfect. So this is what I'm looking for, okay? I'll look at it from the top view so you guys can see it. Here's perspective on. This is orthographic on. You can still tell the difference already. All right, everything's looking pretty good except it's completely flat across the top. Now, with that extra little point in there, check this out. Look, see how you can select a couple of polygons around the outside? All right, we can leave a space. I can pick maybe three in a row, leave a space. Pick three, leave a space, pick three, and then, wow, miraculously we left like one extra space on the outside. All right, this is the part where I'm trying to get you guys to. Check it out. Ready? Look up on my screen real quick. With polygon selected, I'm going to use this tool called extrude. All right, so I got to look down through and find my extrude tool. It's under edit polygons. What extrude lets me do, it lets me take a polygonal face that I have, and I can click and just kind of push it out to create more material. All right, so technically, like, you could do that on any surface. All right, I don't really have any purpose for that stuff. But what we had was we had geometry that allows for us to pick couple of surfaces in key or strategic locations there and just add thickness to them okay any surface that you select you can scale you could continue to extrude you could even come back and you could move or you could rotate or scale later on all right, so whatever kind of additional shape or feature that you're looking to create off of there, as long as you have polygons set up in the right place for that, you can do that. All right, I think kind of going back in time and trying to think about why we set things up the way we did, 
the one little trick to the rook was to add in this extra edge. All right, so by putting that one extra little point in there, or adding one extra little point as we were drawing the top of the rook, we set ourselves up in a position where we could come back and we could use these polygons. All right, and you can do the math however you like. All right, you want it to add up, obviously. You could go like maybe every other to create the turret. It's really up to you. So you can do something like that if you like. All right, you could even maybe like scale those. If you wanted to do something like kind of funky on top, all right. But again, the geometry was created all the way back here at the spline level. All the way back here at the spline level before we ever lathed anything. Okay, so if I go back to this, that extra point, that one single extra point was where that extra edge came from when we laid it around. All right. So as you were drawing lines and creating the shape or the geometry for um, for that spline, I'll do the whole thing one more time really quick. The stuff on the bottom is exactly the same as the pawn. Just basically tracing points wherever you want to put them. The one place where things get a little bit different is right up here. You don't put the turret pieces on. Use uh, that shift key to lock in horizontally or vertically. Put that one extra little segment in. All right, put one extra little segment in as you're kind of closing up that spleen. All right. You can always like move the um, vertices back together here to close them up. But that one extra little point is what gives you the opportunity to add uh, the turret stuff on there. Okay? Don't forget, like I did originally, to get rid of the line in the center. All right? And when you go to use the lathe tool, one other little option here, and this is kind of, kind of important, I suppose. I probably should have said something about it. One extra little option that you have in here. All right, is how many segments you get when you rotate that geometry around. So if, listen, if based on the type of rook you want to create, um, you need to change the number of segments in the rotation, all right, you can change that, right? So like if I want to drop down my segments, if I go down to three, I'm creating a triangle. If I bump that up, that's a four-sided figure, five-sided, six-sided, seven-sided, right? So if we keep going... If the geometry that you want to create on the top of the rook doesn't add up, you can always go back in time. You can undo. You can change that geometry. All right. So, like, maybe you need a 20-sided figure to create the type of, you know, turret on top of it that you want to. All right. You can change that number, 21, 22, whatever, whatever number of sides. All right. And then that way, when you convert it to an editable poly, which you can't change that number, now you can come back in and you can create... The geometry that you're looking for on top based on how many polygons there are surrounding the outside of that lathe tool all right and really it's just a matter of using the extrude tool in that instance all right so the extrude tool will give you the opportunity to kind of change that geometry a little bit all right you guys got time to work uh let's try to do the rook all right it's most of the same exact stuff you just did for the pawn little bit of difference there in how you can construct that line geometry off the top of it um, how you work with like those polygons after they're constructed all right and really that's it that's all you guys got i'm going to post that up on youtube